Hello everyone, it's Leo, and it's time to talk about episode 43 from Hirogaru Sky Precure. What a season, my friends. I loved this episode so much. It could have delivered more in the fights. Yes, it could. But apart from that, it delivered in every single aspect. Incredible. I say this a lot. I know I'm repetitive, but I'm going to say it again. Mashiro is the best written character in Hirogaru Sky, even though everyone is super well written out of the five cures. Everyone is super well written, well done. Mashiro is the best one. And I loved her storyline with Monda that finished in this episode because it just shows Mashiro's power as a person. Incredible. I'm not really talking about Cure Prism. I'm talking more about Mashiro because Prism also showed a little bit more on her power, but Mashiro, on the other hand, really shined more than Prism Shine in this episode. Wow, Prism Shine was incredible. So, uh, this is the closure of Monda's story in a way. He finally let go of everything that was holding him back. And I really loved how this went. So we have Mashiro writing a story. And she is writing the story of a leaf that fell down of a tree. And it fell down by itself. By falling down by itself, it couldn't see the worth because it couldn't do the things that it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be uh, food for other trees to grow, for nuts to grow. And by itself, it's not going to have this power. It's not going to create a good environment only by itself. But Mashiro wanted to give that leaf a happy ending. And I like Mashiro's optimism. But I also think that this Mashiro that we see today in episode 43 would not do the same in episode 1. That Mashiro from episode one has changed so much and has evolved so much that now she is able to see things in such a new perspective. And that's really something. And she doesn't know how to do that. And she goes to the park and she meets Monda there. I love that moment. I love that scene. And I love that for a lot of reasons. The first one is that Mashiro and Monda, they have a relationship already, and Mashiro told Monda lots of things. And those things have been weighing on his mind for a while. He's been thinking about them. He's been reminiscing them. And for him, it's difficult to accept something like, the end can be happy. I can be happy at the end. For him, it's difficult because look at his reality. His reality is entirely different. Now he is working. He is trying to be a human. But even like that, he cannot let go of his grief. He cannot let go of his anger. He does not know how to be happy. And seeing Mashiro have this uh, positive outcome in life for him was very triggering. And... I also love this scene because it just goes to show how the views clash. Mashiro's views clash a lot with Batamonda's views. And it's not only Mashiro and Monda at that moment. It's Hirogaru Sky versus Underg Empire. It's Precure versus Underg Empire. It's the way Precures see the world. And it's the way Underg Empire sees the world. I see lots of people saying that Underg Empire has been underdeveloped in this season. And while I do understand that there wasn't much focus on them, I think that it was just developed in another way. We know a lot of things about Underg Empire that we know through actions and dialogues from the characters from that place. Batamonda has taught us a lot. Minotan, not so much, but Matamonda and Kabaton gave us a lot of lore with just a little bit of their dialogues. And that scene culminated in Monda ripping the book apart because he got triggered by the positive message. He cannot see that for himself. He can't see that that is a possibility for him in life. And while that is sad, that's understandable for him to feel that way because of where he comes from and 
that scene was clearly the highlight of the episode. And I'm here already saying that's my hero corner because it was so well done. The way Mashiro was shocked and not really understanding what was going on at that moment, the rage Monda was feeling, the soundtrack, the way he ripped the, the pages apart, the way he started stomping the book at the end, that is not for him. And for him, that is basically mocking his existence because he cannot be happy. He is the leaf that fell from the tree he left under empire and he is alone now but he is feeling exactly like the leaf in mashiro's story he doesn't know what to do he can't do anything by himself and mashiro's been telling him since the first episode that she met monda you can make your own path you can create your own story can he believe that so far he has internalized that message, but he still believes that message is not for him. And that's what he is trying desperately to believe in, but he can't. And that culminated in that scene. And she noticed that he is Batamanda when he said that he comes from under empire. And at that moment, she realized she didn't need much to realize that. But she did realize he is Batamonda and he quickly got the Mirage pen and he, uh, you know, started mocking Mashiro. We know Batamonda is an awful person. And it's very interesting that they chose Batamonda himself, the uh, most unredeemable villain from Hirogaru Sky, to redeem and focus. I also like that a lot. And so he ends up leaving and Mashiro is left in the rain all by herself. That scene when Sada rescues her and she is crying and she cannot hold it back was also incredible. It was heartbreaking, but it was incredible. I love how Hirogaruskai lets the characters uh, suffer. And they, it, the narrative let the characters uh, feel that moment, you know, feel the sadness love it it's important to feel when you're sad it's important to feel the sadness and so after they're home again and mashiro tells everyone what happens the perspective mashiro's perspective here is very different because she didn't really need everyone else to tell her look we're gonna support you you have to do it no she actually got everything she learned from everyone else and she herself took the decision. I want to talk to Batamonda again and I want to do this. She just needed, like, she didn't really need everyone's support because she knew she had them. And I love that we had a little scene from each of the characters talking to Mashiro and Elle's scene to Mashiro was just, I love you, Mashiro. I love you, Prism. I don't remember necessarily because they were transformed, but still, it was just a very simple phrase. Elle is a baby. She is not a teenager or a child like the others or an adult like Butterfly. She's a baby. And that is what she brought Mashiro. She loves her. And that's the feeling she can give her right now. Love it so much. And so uh, we have the scenario in which Skirhead is still trying to use Batamonda and he gives him lots of underg energy for him to use and he is going to get destroyed with all of this underg energy. And so when Mashiro gets to meet Batamonda again, he tries uh, to use the energy, but he is scared and Skirhead makes him use the energy nonetheless. And I like the approach. Again, great approach. When he sees that Mashiro is arriving and talking, wanting to talk to him, he's like, I won't give you your pen back. It's not with me anymore. It was not what she was going after. But for him, that's what he thought she was going after. Because for Batamonda and for Under Empire residents and generals, only one thing matters. Power. And I also liked... Uh, when Mashiro acknowledged that when she was talking to the girls, 
when she was mentioning under empire and she talked about this uh for them what really matters deep down is power you need to be powerful and uh it's kind of also nice to make a parallel with Mashiro at the start of the show and who she is now because now she does not believe she needs to be the best one she needs to be the most powerful one she learned to make mistakes she learned to trust the girls and she learned that she can find her own way why did she learn that because of everyone else's influence Sara is making her own path Tsubasa is making his own path Agha is making her own path with their influences she learned that she can do whatever she wants to do and she is trying with her stories now love it incredibly nice and this ties so well with everything that's been constructed about under empire so far so that is why i think under empire is a great villain side by the narrative of not really showing the villains just by giving us little hints of what's really going on there but still batamonda uses the energy and even after using the energy uh he was able to go against skierhead and hit him i was so shocked at that moment because at that moment i could confirm that batamonda or monda or whatever internalized mashiro's messages to him he knew and he understood that she was telling him something real and he was able even with that big amount of under energy he was able to go and stay true to what he started to believe in that was not enough obviously because the under energy still took hold of him and controlled him so we had a little dragon ball a little broly batamonda and the girls transformed and you know the fighting scene it could have been way better than it was especially in a special moment like this i kind of liked seeing butterfly use the shields lots of times and we could even see her getting physical a little bit I know it was not her moment. I'm not even mad that the shields broke because, you know, she was battling against an enemy that, you know, it's way different than all of the enemies that they've battled so far. And what matters is that Prism was able to also have her moment because she noticed that in Batamonda's heart, his will, his wish of being the owner of his own destiny was there and she stood up she never gave up it's just like skier had said you're a weakling but you never give up and for her it doesn't matter what skier had thinks of her what matters to her is for her to find her own path is for her to stand tall and strong and that's what she did and she used her own power in a completely different way and this new power that she created was able to dissipate the under energy and make batamonda's soul rise again and with that they were able to purify him with majestic halation oh my god you know i i also felt like a little bit more in intense battle it would have been better but okay like the rest of it was really cool and so skier had just went back and at the end batamonda it feels to me that batamonda now accepts the idea that he doesn't need to pretend to be human you know just like kabaton you know on earth kabaton on earth here is just himself batamonda can be himself too right and he was there sitting down and telling Sora like oh i thought you would never forget forgive me and now Sora knows that he learned a lesson now we know that he actually learned a lesson i don't i don't know if he actually believes that what he did was wrong but we at, at least we know that he's not going to do that again and at the end we see that he asks for forgiveness for what he did to Mashiro not to Sora not to Shalala the only time he asked for forgiveness was to Mashiro 
And for the first time, we can see Batamonda walking happily and free. Batamonda is free to follow the path he wants to. I'm happy for him and I'm ha very, very happy for Mashiro because she won the contest. She was able to win the contest by finishing her book because uh, that little leaf learned that it didn't need to do what it was supposed to do. It could do other things. It could do, it could travel the world with the wind. It could uh, swim in the sea, in the rivers. It could find its own path. The message of Hirogaru Sky is expand your horizons. That's what the leaf did. That's what Batamonda did. That's what Mashiro does every single day. Gorgeous. Incredible. I loved it. As I said, my hero corner is the moment Batamonda ripped the story apart. Very tough scene to watch. Yes. But powerful. Very powerful. Incredibly done. Next week, we are going to see Empress Under. She is going directly to Skyland, baby. What is going on? I am excited. And we see a grown-up purple-haired girl. What's going on? I don't know. I believe that one is probably the legendary cure and not Elchan. Let's wait and see. Anyways, babes, this is it for now. I want to take this little time to thank the members of the Magical Cinema channel. If you are a member, thank you very, very much for your support. And if you've watched up to now, thank you so much as well. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bye-bye.